Absolutely delighted to announce Hamir Halgrimson as our new head coach yesterday and to present him to the media and the Irish public today. He was the outstanding candidate for the role based on a number of factors. Firstly, he has fantastic experience at international level, national teams with two countries, Iceland and most recently Jamaica. He has a track record of qualifying for major tournaments, Iceland in Euro 2016, World Cup 2018, and obviously most recently with Jamaica in the Copa America 2024. Not only has he been successful qualifying for major tournaments, but has a track record of progression in tournaments evidenced by, most notably by Iceland in Euro 2016, reaching the quarterfinals. He has also demonstrated a history of moving teams up the international rankings, which is significant for where we are as an island senior men's team. Over the course of his time at Iceland, they reached their highest ever FIFA ranking of 18. And whilst his time as Jamaica saw the team rise up the world rankings also, which is very important and critical for us. He also has a track record of creating the right environment for teams to, to maximize the potential of the players and achieve results on the pitch, evidenced by his record and experience in developing players. The experience of Hamir aligned perfectly with our criteria, which included five key points. One, his previous international head ex coach experience and success in those roles. The ability to take international teams up the rankings in similar positions to where we are in Ireland. Demonstrated a track record of qualifying and also competing at major tournaments the ability to maximise the capability of the available players and produce winning football, and the experience and development of players and young players. Regarding the process itself, there are three important points I'd like to make at this point, and I would like to cover. One, we ran a very thorough process in which we identified Hamir as our outstanding and number one candidate. Two, it was a hugely important to us that we ran a confidential process. This was important firstly to respect the candidates we spoke to and those who, and secondly, is how an association and a professional organisation should run its business. As such, I will not be commenting on any other candidates who have been in the process. The third point is around the timeline. As part of the process which we commenced at the back end of last year, we identified Hamir as a candidate and had an initial conversation with him in a very informal way in which we did the same with other candidates at that point. In March, our selection panel decided that Hamir was our number one candidate and he was the person we wanted for the role. We wanted to appoint Hamir, but he has been very consistent and very committed to the Jamaica national team competing in the CONCACAF Nations League and also the Copa America. This was a decision that we absolutely respected we remained in contact with Hamir and were willing to wait for him to become available. For us, for Irish football, for the selection panel and all of our key focus, it was always about getting the right person. It was always about getting the right person. And that was fundamental to the whole process, the whole time. Whilst we were looking at the short term, we were also looking at the long term and we were absolutely focused to make sure that we got this appointment right and the right person for our senior men's team and for Irish football. And that is exactly why we made the decision to wait and secure Hamir at this point. As you would expect, and in order to protect the association, we remained in contact with other candidates. We were open, transparent conversations with Hamir. However, it's important to mention that Hamir was the only candidate we ever made a contract offer to. Hamir became available post-America, having resigned from the previous role. This enabled us to have formal contractual conversations and execute contract talks in the last nine to ten days. Final point. It is true this took time. We were always in control of the process. Always. We wanted to appoint someone who was the best person for the job, Irish football and our senior men's team. That is not something at any point we were willing to compromise on. We were never willing to compromise on that. And despite lots of external pressure and pressure on making an appointment, we stayed true to what we believed was right, and that was to find the best person for the job. 
and we were happy to wait for our number one candidate and delighted that he's sat here next to us today and we wish him good luck. I also want to thank and pay tribute to John O'Shea, who we have huge respect for, both as a player and also as a coach. He and his staff have guided the team through recent international friendlies in the last two windows. They prepared the team impeccably, created a brilliant environment for the players and achieved positive performances and results on the pitch. Finally, from me, we are thrilled to welcome Hamir and excited to what he'll bring to our senior men's team and indeed the association and Irish football as a whole. As well as being an important day for Irish football, it is also a significant and proud day for Hamir himself, his wife who is here today, and also his family. Today is Hamir's first day, and in the next week and coming weeks, he will be learning more about the players and the team, starting preparations for our important matches in the autumn, starting in September, taking in League of Ireland matches, meeting people at grassroots, amongst several other aspects, and I know he's excited to get going. So I know you're all keen to hear from him, so Hamir and I are happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. We'll start with uh, David from RT, please. Hamir, hey, congratulations on the appointment. Just tell us how it came about after the initial contact from the FAR. So how it came about in regards to what? From, from the moment from the, the first approach to you actually agreeing to become new head coach. Well, it was a f from from them and from some others. It was some interest. So, no, I I, I said from beginning, I was committed to Jamaica, finalize uh, finishing the Copa America, etc. But it was always uh, an interested project. This this national team, and I think this this job is really an interesting project, uh, exciting for all coaches. I think. And so when it got closer to Copa, I was more leaning on, on, on this, even though I had some other, other offers as well. So before Copa America, I, I talked to the president of Jamaica, told him I would resign after, after Copa. Uh, and I tried to depart Jamaica in, a, in, a, in as much positive way as possible. And I think we succeeded in that, and thanks to, to them to do it on a professional note. But yeah, it was always kind of exciting and, and on top of my list to, to come here. I don't know when it was, you know, what date it was when I was kind of clear in my head to take this. But, you know, I, I just always admire the, the professionalism from the board, uh, the respect they showed me uh, in the process. Uh, I know it was probably difficult for them when I repeated myself again and again, and I was focused on finishing the Copa America and probably not the day that they wanted to hear, but they, they were really professional and honest all the time. You mentioned yesterday about going back to basics. Can you just expand on that? Uh, football in general, you, you need basics, especially at this level, at international level. Uh, it's, it's tricky to be a national team coach. It's totally different from being a club coach and a national team coach. You, your time with the players is so limited. So you need to have the basics perfect before you build on something different. If you forget the basics, being organized, being compact, being a strong unit, that's always the first thing you need as a national team coach. And then you can build on progressively from that, <clears throat> that thing. So that was kind of what I meant, not starting with the fancy stuff and forgetting the basics. Anne-Marie, thank you. Uh, Mark, just look at the questions around the timeline. Um, when you identified Hamer as your number one target in March, we were told that there had been an announcement about the manager in April. Was there a chance that Hamer was going to come to us before the Cup of America? Obviously, we, we ran a process from late December, as, as, you're, as you're aware. That, those early stages, the first couple of months, so the end of December, most of January was a lot of exploratory conversations with people that we identified for people that met our criteria. I was a, ended up being quite a small pool of, called pool of people. Us as a panel made a decision that we wanted to focus on someone who met that criteria as close as possible, which you would expect. Hamir was clearly one of those candidates who met that criteria above and beyond, and, and some. We, we, we made that decision in March, and we obviously communicated at that point that we had hoped to make an appointment in early April. 
Amy was one of those people that was un under contract. I think if we had our time again, and I acknowledge uh, this in April uh, in the video, and I acknowledge it again today, that we wouldn't communicate in that way at that point. Uh, we'd hope that we could do that, but we, we recognize and take responsibility that if we had our time again, we would have said from the very outset and very consistently the whole time, the focus is on getting the right person for the job, and for however long that takes, we would take that time. So I think the learnings that we had from that is setting timelines that created expectation for people that, that we would make an appointment at that point. And I think that's, that's some learning for us um, to take on board. So the Premier may not have necessarily been the candidate you were going to announce in April? And we made a decision that Hamey was our number one candidate. Sky Sports? He was the candidate you were expecting to announce in April and no, no, you were hoping to get him before the Cup we, of we, we made the decision that Hamey was our number one candidate. We would hope to have concluded that process. It wasn't possible. Hamey was consistent all the way through that he's committed to that, that piece, the, the Nations League and the Copa America. And the reflection, the learning for us is that we shouldn't communicate that we'd hope to, to make an announcement at that point. Uh, Stephen Murphy from Skyheimer. Congratulations and best of luck with the job Thank ahead of you. Thank you. Um, given that you were obviously famously involved in the Iceland team that knocked England out of the Euros eight years ago, and given what Gareth Southgate has gone on to do with that team and their results last time, would you fancy them to beat Spain in the final on Sunday? Do you think they'll come here as European champions in September? That's, that's a that's an, that's an ice. You can slip on that one. Um, yeah, I said from beginning that England is going to win the, the tournament. Uh, even though when they didn't play their best, best game, they still won. They, they, they grinded the resource, and I still believe that they are going to win it. Uh, so, yeah. How do you prepare to take on that level of policy then so soon in your job? Well, that's just our job to face face anyone we, we, we are drawn against or is in our group. That's just our job. Uh, and I've said all the time that even playing the best, probably they will be European champions. So playing the best will at least expose our weaknesses. So it helps us to, to improve what we need to improve. So we will always have some, some answers, good or bad. I, I hope there will be good answers, but we will have a lot of answers after that game. BBC Norman Ireland, please. Hey, uh, Mark Saibon, BBC Sport. Uh, firstly, welcome. Uh, Thank you. Secondly, uh, we wish you well in the job. Is it a job that you had to think long and hard about taking, or is it one which appealed immediately? When you have some interest from, from different areas, you of course think what are the, are the pros and cons. And I think in this case, it was a lot of positives that, that for me to take this job, I think the, the squad is really interesting. Young players uh, that have been given, what I think is really important is they have been given time, international time to play. So young players with international experience, uh, I think that's the most exciting thing. But what kind of made my decision was the professionalism from the board in the contacts. They showed me a, a, a big respect, even though I knew that they might go for someone else. I, I insisted that I wanted to finish the, the Nations League with Jamaica and then the Copa America. Um, so, yeah, they, they, were, they, they were just so professional. It's, for me, it was, that was probably the most appealing thing, working for these people, and I, I, I hope that it's going to be fruitful. That, but, again, the, the position uh, on the FIFA ranking, I think there's potential to go higher. Uh, and, of course, in the future with young players, they, they will hopefully progress and develop and and we will be a force reckoned with in the, in the future. From Iceland to Ireland, by Jamaica, your football club, Ericsson, you have a reputation for bringing small nations to big tournaments. What makes you believe you can bring Ireland back to the big stage? Experience, probably. Um, no, uh, it's a lot of similarities. I've said before, it's a lot of similarities. Both the, the characteristics of Irish people and Icelandic people. So it's very similar characteristics. The, the team is similar to the Icelandic team we, we started with in the beginning. Young, exciting, really good team spirit, etc. So it's a lot of similarities. So I hope we can build on the same things, similar things that we did in Iceland. Um, 
a little bit different in Jamaica. They were more high-profile players that we used, but, but yeah, there's some things that key elements that we need to work on to get results in, in at this level. Mark, just one final question. In relation to the allegations of historic sexual abuse, what's your message, the FAI's message, to those women who've spoken out? As, as has already been communicated in the, in the last week to repeat some of those same messages that football should always be, as a first objective, a safe place for everyone. And it's horrible that those women have had to go through those experiences and, and they shouldn't have, and no one should ever go through that experience ever again. Testament to that courageous group of women who've spoken up for themselves, but also future girls and women that play football in this sport, that that should never happen to anyone in sport or in any environment. And I think hopefully we can take some positives from this to make sure that we build on the more positive work that's done in recent years around safeguarding and make sure that never, ever happens again. But massive courage and for them to step up and to make sure that's in place for future generations. Thank you both very much. Will, off the ball. Um, hey, Mark, how much of a challenge is it to be coming into this Nations League campaign without having had a friendly with the squad or maybe not all of some squad before then? <coughs> The challenge for me is, of course, getting to know everything and everyone and learning the names and, and you know, what they can bring to, to, to the national team, etc. So that, that is going to be a tough time for me as, as a coach. So I'm relying on the past coaches, uh, John O'Shea and more, to, to assist and help. And I, I called him yesterday, uh, told him that I really would love to have him as a part of this journey. Um, and he has had a, a lot of respect from the board, being a caretaker. And I really think in, in the context of continuity and, and progress that if he is on board, we will probably be faster uh, in what we want to achieve. And the same with the staff. So I think that will be the most challenging thing for me to, to kind of knowing not only the players, uh, but the culture, etc. So we can tap into everything we, we need to, to win. England and, and Greece. Um, Mark, is that something you'd welcome as well? Did you discuss that with John O'Shea before this appointment made about him potentially being in the backroom team? John and I have always had regular conversations all the way through the process since the first time that we asked him to be interim in March and then same in June. We've always had a, an open and transparent conversation with John. It was always clear that that would be an interim role for those two periods and then in the last few weeks since the international games finished, obviously we, we continued those conversations and explained at a high level what we were doing, conscious it was very confidential and we remained that all the way through and expressed the desire from the association as well that he's an important part of what we want to do moving forwards. And then more broadly, we, we, we genuinely want to gener develop Irish coaches and I think that's really important. And that was part of our conversations with Hamie, it was really important that the coach who was coming in understood the bigger picture, all the things we're trying to do around the football pathways plan, and develop players and coaches, and see John and others, other Irish coaches, being part of the now and the future. So if John is keen to continue, we, we, we hope that's the case. And just one last one for me here. I hope you appreciate why I've asked you this question, because obviously we're in the middle of the accusations which uh, the interim CEO and Mark have already spoken about. But you've spoken about Mason Greenwood before and you were interested in getting him in the Jamaica squad. Just wondering how you feel about those comments now if you give you a chance to address the comments you made. Yeah, it's all, always in what context the question is asked in, in what scenario uh, the, the, the question is asked. I absolutely don't approve of his actions, just to make that clear. The, the question to me was after the president of the Jamaica Federation and the General Secretary welcomed him to play for Jamaica. So obviously the coach got the question. The um, political answer was that obviously all coaches would like to have the best players available and that was kind of my answer to, to them. Uh, didn't need to take a decision on selecting him, never, never came to that. So kind of trying to maybe dock the question because uh, answering questions like this Whatever you say is, it will always be people supporting and against what you are saying. So, yeah, that was just my answer to the scenario at that time.
Uh, just for Mark, uh, hey Mark, congratulations and I suppose welcome to Ireland. Thank you. Uh, it was just mentioned earlier that there was a number of factors to do the press conference today. Is it possible for the FBI to elaborate on what some of those factors were to do this today? Yeah, I'll take that. Um, so I think, as everyone can appreciate, there's quite a bit going on in the, in the football world at the moment, most notably the news stories from last weekend. We also have the women's national team competing tomorrow. Um, I know there was question marks as to why we went today. We didn't want to go head to head with the women's national team fixtures. We're away against England on Friday at home to France on Tuesday. Obviously it's a two stage announcement. So the reality is, hey Mir, we wanted to make sure he was up and running with as much advanced preparation time for September as possible. And we couldn't wait a further week, unfortunately. And just to yourself, Hamer, obviously today there's a lot of uh, issues that aren't related to your job being spoken about, a lot of historical stuff. And yesterday, one of Ireland's greatest players, Damien Duff, said he'd like to see Abbottstown raised to the ground. This was before you were announced. But how does it feel to come into a job and to have this background noise about your future employers kind of in, in, in the ether? Well, it's not, it's not for me to kind of say anything about that. This is, if I understood you correctly, he was talking about the, what, the federation or what? Yeah, saying about. Yeah, so I, I cannot comment on that. Really, don't have the background information about anything of this, so don't want to. Don't want to. Does it kind of make you apprehensive to come into this role, hearing kind of this stuff being said? Uh, yeah, I have enough on my plate now for the last two days, so adding on to that probably is, is disturbing a little bit. But I'm trying to focus in on what I can do. Uh, and what I can bring to the table, so just trying to focus. I might just conclude on that remark, because I appreciate it. I don't know if Hamer has even seen those comments. Um, I think, look, Damien is absolutely <coughs> welcome to voice his own opinions. All I can kind of reflect is my own experiences with the association, and it's been very encouraging. I think the reality is I'm surrounded on a daily basis by really passionate colleagues, both in the office and across the country, that want to make a difference in Irish football. So um, I appreciate Damien's welcome to his own opinions, but I just want to reaffirm for my colleagues' benefit that we see the value in what they bring to the association and to Irish football day in, day out. Gavin, please. Uh, Dave, you just said the circumstances are out of your control for these announcements. Ireland will play England in a football match tomorrow. What, what message does this send to the women's football side of the house that this is taking place, that this is completely overshadowing that event? Well, I think we, we have tried to pay absolute respect to the women's national team. We have spoken to Eileen in advance of the announcement. She understands that this is the reality of professional football. Unfortunately, the calendar is jam-packed, as we well know. Um, there's never an ideal time for these um, announcements, and I think the reality is we had secured our preferred candidate. We wanted to ensure that he could get going as quickly as possible. Hello, please. Mark, uh, when you said there'd be an appointment in early April, you read it out on statement and there was nothing ambiguous in what you said. So what changed? Were you misleading us or did something actually change? Um, despite, contrary to what has been written and said, uh, it was never, ever our intent to deliberately mislead anyone. Never, no, no, I'll, I'll carry on answering your question, but just to be super clear, never, ever did we sit in a room talking about what we were doing and thinking, let's deliberately mislead anyone. Never ever was that part of our conversation, decision-making, discussion, ever. It was always to focus on getting the right person. I've, or, I've acknowledged and I'm conscious I'm repeating myself and will and continue to do so if we get similar questions, that we recognise that that was not the best communication from us. We, we recognise and acknowledge that and take responsibility from us, from ourselves. If we were to do the, that again, we would communicate in a different way, and it's good learnings for us moving forwards. But we, we've always stayed true to the fact that we try to get the best person for the job. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, I can understand that we thought you had your man at that point. Yeah. Ben just said that he was never moving anywhere until after the cup. Yeah, and I, and I understand your question. I, I'll, if you want me to repeat the same thing, I'll just repeat the same thing. But we, we recognise um, how that might have been perceived. We understand that, and we've already acknowledged that and take responsibility from that. 
final question in here before we go into the um, dailies. Daily, please. Uh, Hengar, will you be based in Ireland? Will you live in Ireland? Yes. So that will be our next next days. Me and my wife just looking at where we wanna we wanna stay on the island. I think again experience. I think just to get to know the culture, know the people especially the football culture, seeing the league, etc., is, is better. Even though it's a short distance to Iceland and it was only a, a two-hour flight, even though it's a short distance, I think uh, doing the job, I think, is, is better. It would be more helpful to be here and knowing the people. And fine, have you given thought to your backroom team? Do you have in mind the kind of team you'd like to assemble? Uh, no, really haven't been much time to think about that. Uh, talk to the, to the guys in the board and they, they all praise the current staff, uh, I think, again, talking about uh, continuity to have the same same staff. Talked to Shim Skoma this morning, he, he praised the staff a lot, uh, and the same with John O'Shea. So I don't think, I, I, I don't come with demands to have staff with me here. Uh, I think culture wise, it's good to have the Irish staff uh, continuing. So. I, I am pretty flexible, adjustable, uh, and I think I am in an environment where people around me know more about things than I do. So, yeah, so hopefully everything will work out as smoothly as possible. And, and just in terms of the contract runs up until the World Cup qualifiers, the end of the World Cup qualifiers, mm -hmm. right? David, final question. Yeah, Mark, just one question. on, In terms of the original job spec, for this position, the criteria that was laid out. Was there ever a possibility of, of that changing? And because obviously I know you know international experience was, was one of the, the big things. Because the process took so long, was there ever a possibility of the FBI having to say, look, we're going to have to change this, we're going to have to look at it in a different direction to, to this position? We were very clear that the Heime was the type of coach we wanted and that that was our absolute number one objective. There would, there would always have been a point where we, were, we would get close to September to the competitive matches where we might have had to adjust that criteria. But we're fortunate that we never got to that stage and we were able to secure Amy's uh, Amy here with us today that absolutely matched our criteria. And we've never, we never had to debate that in detail and have a proper discussion on that because we're sat here today, which is great. Thank you, guys. The Daily Suddle is a dressing room for us. We'd like to model. Thank you.